Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, I'm Jane and my husband Mike is behind the camera. We're British, early retirees, debt and mortgage free and living a thrifty, frugal and money saving life on a super tight budget here in Brittany in northwest France. We make several videos every week and if you enjoy them make sure that you hit the like button. Let's have a look at what we're going to have a chat about this week. This week's midweek money chat is all about those irregular expenses that, let's face it, any of us can easily forget to budget. Now I know some of you watching this, you'll be old hands at budgeting and some of you will be new at it. And as you get better at budgeting and you get used to having sinking funds or savings pots or whatever you like to call them, you will build savings for all the things that we're gonna to mention today. But if you're in the early stages or budgeting something that is not so easy for you, these are some suggestions of things that you can think of Let's get started. Number one are bills that are not regular. Some bills only come in once a year. We only pay our income tax bill once a year. We only pay our business tax bill once a year, our tax foncier, our property tax once a year. We pay our water bill twice a year, but you may have other bills in there that are not regular, that only pop up once a year, subscriptions may be one of them, or anything that you need to pay for on an irregular basis. So there's that, number one, irregular bills. Number two are seasonal adjustments. Can you think of anything that you need to pay for in the winter that you don't pay for in the summer, or you pay for in the summer that you don't pay for in the winter? An example from us is that we have lots of grass to cut and we have to pay for fuel for the machinery to cut that. You may have a lawn service. You may not be able to do it yourself. You may not have the time or the health to do it. So are there things that you pay for in one season that you don't pay for in another season that actually you might need to put in your budget and save for all year long? Number three is home maintenance. We've started doing some maintenance. We've been in our house now for nearly four years and the things that we did in the beginning now need doing again. So we've just painted our bathrooms. This year we're going to paint our living room again and that's an expense. And we, we have a sinking fund for DIY that we can take that money out of for that budget. But do you have something like that? Are there things that you need to pay for to maintain your house? Another something that we have to pay for is we have to pay for a chimney sweep once a year. Maybe you need to pay for some maintenance. Maybe it may be something like central heating servicing once a year or air cooling system servicing once a year. But these things can crop up and if we don't have a budget for them, what budget are we going to take them? Take the monies from? Next one is occasional and irregular charitable donations. If you're British, you will absolutely get this. So let's go through so many of these that occur. We've got Christmas jumper day. You're going into the office. You have to wear a Christmas jumper and bring some money in. We, you might have a, donations for water aid. You might have donations for help the aged. They might be donations for cancer research and we're all supposed to go around wearing a daffodil. Then we've got the irregular events such as Christmas fairs at school, the Easter fair. Um, I would love to go a list of them here. You might be at work and this is a very popular thing. If somebody's running a 10K or if someone's running a marathon, they use that event to do some big fundraising and then you might sponsor them to do that. So. There are so many things that just pop up here and there that are just charitable donations. Here in France, we do not have collection points all the time in our supermarkets where you can just put a little bit in at a time for the food bank. They do big collections. 
and they will hand you a list as you go in. What we do is, is when we, we just remember at that time, is take some money from our savings and then we buy something for the Resto de Co. And we usually do two trolleyfuls, one for us and one for the Resto de Co. But we're getting into the swing of this now, but initially these things popped up and we kept thinking like, oh, we haven't planned for this, but now we can. And you can too, because wherever you live, you'll know that actually they're not as irregular as you think. There will be some pattern and rhythm to them. The next one is personal care. Have you put something in your budget for personal care? Whether it's skincare products that you buy, for haircuts, maybe you need to have your feet looked after and you go to a podiatrist. Maybe you have some kind of counselling or talking therapy that you have to pay for out of pocket. Anything like physiotherapy, most of those things are an out of pocket expense. And they may be very, very irregular, but they can pop up. And we all need to know that somewhere we need to put a little bit of money aside, even if it's just for a haircut every three or four months, we do need to have something in our budget somewhere for personal care. The next budget title could be your garden. If you've got a garden, you'll know there will always be bits and pieces that you want to buy for it. More plants, more trees, maybe mulch, maybe garden services, maybe compost, maybe seeds. All of these things, and I know because they've cropped up in my budget recently, are enormously expensive. So next year and this year onwards, I'm definitely adding the garden to my budget. Another irregular expense that people could easily overlook and not add to their budget could be the cost of their hobbies. I'm a quilter. I know very well there's a lot of quilters out there who spend an awful lot of money on that hobby. So if that is you, if you are someone who has a hobby that costs money, it needs to be a line on your budget somewhere or it needs to be a sinking fund. We all need to put a bit of money aside so we don't dip into other expenses or savings and we set up a proper line in our budget for hobbies. It's really easy to overlook home items that are going to need replacing. Nothing in our house is immortal. If our hair dryer breaks down and we have to go to work with wet hair, that's an annoying thing, isn't it? If the coffee machine breaks down, you can't make yourself a coffee. The washing machine breaks down and you haven't got any money set aside for it. So you end up going to the laundrette for six months until you save up for a new washing machine. All of those things are a real inconvenience and we can so easily overlook them. So let's make sure that we've got a line in our budget or in our savings funds for replacing home items. The next irregular expense is anything to do with your children because they don't grow on a steady incline, do they? Things don't happen on a regular basis, hmm. or do they? So these are the many things that people might not plan for if they have children or get caught out by, and I've got a big list here. School holidays, those times where you need to spend more money on the children, they're going to eat more, they're going to need more entertainment. These things people seem to be unprepared for, some, not all. They grow in the middle of the year. So people prepare for school uniform for September but forget the fact that they're gonna grow out of it by January. And it's something that needs to be an ongoing expense and you need to budget for it. They're going to need PE kits, they're going to need shoes, they're going to need equipment for school, stationery, books, all of those things for school. Then all of those charitable donations that pop up in the school calendar, I'm looking at my list here. And of course, all of those extracurricular activities. And as well, if you have children, 
they will be invited to birthday parties. So you're going to need something very small in your budget somewhere for those little presents that the children are going to take with them. And it always surprises me, the things that you can forget when you're a parent and are things that we did forget when our children were young and they do pop up and you do need a budget for it or it can really trip you up. The final point is about having something in your budget, even if it's only small, for discretionary spending. And this is the part that can blow your budget. This is the odd coffee, the odd bit of makeup that you might pick up, a magazine, something to eat. Those things, if you do not have a specific line in your budget for this and a set amount of money that you stick to, this is where people really easily blow the budget. It might be a takeaway, it might be, as I said, something to eat, it might just be treats for the children. But having a line on your budget that says discretionary spending and knowing how much it is either per person or for your family or each child, it's knowing that amount and sticking to it so it doesn't blow your budget. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for hitting the like button. Thanks for all your comments and we read every single one of them. Thanks to everyone who is a subscriber and if you're not, go on, hit that subscribe button. It costs you nothing. We'll see you soon. Bye.